Last we left, Private Lindau has captured. Graham and the rest of the KGL defenders have made it back to the 5th KGL Line Battalion Square. Uh, by this point, the square was basically uh, just a clump. Um, the wounded were actually so many. Uh, there were so many wounded in the square that all the officers were actually outside of the square. Uh, if you didn't have a bayonet, you were pretty much outside the square. Um, von Umptida was outside, still mounted. Uh, von Umptida was still mounted. Um, and it got to the point where Baring was actually sent to the 1st KGL. He and his men were sent to the 1st KGL, who resupplied them with ammunition. Uh, what, what ammunition they had left. So they, they backed to about 30 rounds a man. And uh, they took up skirmishing duties. So that is where their story ends. But that's not where Baring's story ends. Uh, because Baring has lost three horses, but he loses five. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, he has lost three horses so far, but he does lose five. Uh, he is sitting on his horse, um, directing the men of the 1st and 5th, 1st and 2nd KGL, when his hat is knocked off. The book said his hat was shot off. It's pretty hard to shoot someone's hat off. I think he was more likely, like he'd, waving it around, they went to put it back on, and it, and it fell. Um, so he gets off his horse to pick up his hat, and well, on the ground, he observes that the saddlecloth has actually got four bullet holes in it from uh, from where the enemy have very nearly killed his horse. And now, just as he is about to get back on his saddle, a bullet uh, whizzes across the, the hump of the saddle and actually takes out the area where he was just sitting. Uh, it doesn't kill the horse, but it takes a good chunk out of the saddle. And uh, if he was still mounted, it would have got him right in the thigh, probably passed through the thigh and through a quite vital and important area for a gentleman like uh, like Barring, of course. Um, so that would have been bad. Uh, Barring then gets back on the horse and it is hit in the chest with a cannonball. Uh, von Umpteter's horse was also hit in the chest with a cannonball as well. Um, both men got new mounts. And uh, just to round off Barring's story, uh, Barring uh, then has gets another horse, a fourth horse, uh, and uh, sorry, he gets his fifth horse, uh, remount, uh, and then this horse is shot in the leg, collapses, and actually pins him underneath him, and Barring disentangles himself from the horse, but he's so wounded in the leg that he can't stand up. He can still ride, but he can't stand. And uh, he he basically, <laughs> he actually writes in his memoirs that uh, you've never known disappointment, like he, he genuinely felt disappointed that his men were not going to get him another horse. Um, they were going to just carry him back to safety. He's like, oh, I want another friggin' horse. And... Um, the the man and somebody ends up giving him a horse. There was like a, a crazy air horse that was just floating around. And uh, by the time he finds a horse, the KGL have have moved on. And so our, our man, um, Major Barring, defender of La Haison, ends the battle with the fifth um, KGL dragoons. He ends the battle with the KGL dragoons, uh, chasing the French off. So um, so he went from defending La Haison to pursuing the French enemy. So that's. So that is how Von Baring's story ends. But, Von Umpteter, why have I been talking about Umpteter this whole time? All he's done is basically sit around in a square, quite bravely, but uh, this is where Umpteter comes into being. And this is why I have my sword behind me. Because what Umpteter does is so friggin' awesome, I have to have the sword to show you it. So, Umpteter is now ordered to occupy Le Um... It's pretty pointless at this stage, but yeah, he's, he's trying to occupy La Haison. So, uh, he basically sends his aide to uh, to Von Alden. Von Alden is his commander. Um, and his commander above that is, of course, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Orange. And uh, Silly Billy, if you've seen the Sharp thing, uh, that's the guy Sharp ends up getting in fights with. This actually inspires the action in, in Sharp, in the in Sharp's Waterloo. And uh, so, Von Umpteter basically says, I'm not friggin' advancing, there's friggin' cuirassiers, literally right there, I can see them, you can actually see the tops of the helmets, and uh, Somerset, Lord Somerset, uh, who is the ADC for, for uh, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Orange, actually brings the Prince of Orange and uh, Von Alten to Von Umpteda, and they have a discussion, uh, that's a polite way of saying an argument, but with gentlemen, um, Umpteda says, there's some friggin' cavalry there. I can literally see the helmets. And uh, His Royal Highness, Prince of Orange, goes, that's a, that's a Dutch. That's a Dutch. And uh, eventually Von Alten and Von Umpteda managed to convince him that, no, the cavalry 200 metres away are not Dutch. They're actually French cuirassiers. But uh, Prince of Orange just doesn't care. He's like, oh, charge, assault the assault Lahaisant. Take Lahaisant. Um, you, you pretty much, you coward. Uh, you, you're worried about these cuirassiers. Bah. 
And so Von Umtetter turns to him and says, Yes, sir. I will do that, sir. And then he turns to the Lieutenant Colonel of the 5th Line Battalion, and he says, I have two nephews in this battalion. We're about to freaking die. Uh, make sure they are safe. Of course, these are the only two nephews he has. Uh, his brother has been killed, and um, he still has a single brother alive. These are actually the nephews of his living brother. And uh, he says, it, whatever happens, make sure they live. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel who's nods, and uh, the order is given, form line. Uh, and the 5th KGL Line Battalion advances towards La Haye What happens now is why Umtida is the single biggest troll. Um, he literally gave his... Well, I won't say that. He's probably the biggest troll of Waterloo because he basically plays the I told you so game to its final degree. Um, he basically says, I'm not charging, we're going to get cut to pieces by by uh, Carassiers and all killed. And he says, no, no, that's fine. It's It's like when you're at work and someone says... Just put the box on top of that. You'll be right, mate. And uh, you go, well, it's going to fall. If I put the box up there, it'll freaking fall over. It's like, no, nah, do it anyway. So, right, you're telling me to do it. I'm going to do it. You put it up there and it all falls over and you go, oh, I fucking told you so. Oh, you know, who could have seen that coming? And so Von Umptidus basically goes, okay, who could have seen that coming? And he leads his men forward. He's on horseback. And uh, exactly what you think happens, happens. Uh, the Carassiers burst out of the, the fold in the ground. They can't believe their luck. These guys who've been so masterfully line, square, line, square, all day long, all day long. They finally get them in line. They can't believe their luck. They kill, tw they kill or seriously wound 12 officers, 12 sergeants, 128 men of an already depleted battalion. The lieutenant colonel, is, his horse is killed. He extricates himself from his horse and he finds the two nephews, the 14 and 16 year old boys. And he grabs them by the, the scruff of the neck and he actually drags them to the first and second um, KGL who are behind uh, behind the sort defile and he basically throws them to the ground he's like you freaking stay in here with the uh, with the KGL where you're safe uh, then Von Umtida does this honor had been fulfilled Von Umtida had advanced his battalion as he was ordered and it had been cut to pieces as he said but Von Umtida was was called a coward he was he was insulted his honor was insulted and so he drew his sword. It wouldn't look like this is a later pattern sword. It's not actually, it's just an imitation. Anyway, he drew his sword and he charged La Haison by himself. Against a, hundreds of French, he charged friggin' by himself against the Frenchman just to say, I told you so to his boss. How many of you have that kind of commitment? Get some von Umpteda commitment in your lives, you know? Next time someone says to you, just put the thing up there and you know it's going to fall. Don't just put it up there. Stand near it so you get hit and injured too. You Put your life on the line for, for your pride and to troll your boss and say, you know, I was right. So he draws his sword and he charges the Frenchman. He charges him and he actually jumps. He's very impressive. Uh, a bunch of Frenchmen actually take aim at him with their muskets and their officers jump out and knock him out of the way. Uh, Von Uptede then jumps over the garden wall into the courtyard and he starts hacking at the, he starts hacking at the Frenchman. I've got a lot of room here, so he starts hacking at the Frenchman. Uh, he knocks a few Shakos off. I believe he kills like one or two guys, injures a few more. And then he is shot through the neck. It's actually sharp, so I shouldn't be playing with it too much. So that's awfully loud, sorry. He is shot up through the neck, which is how we know he was still on horseback at the time of his death. You know, bang, death, uh, down with von Umpteda. Um but his two nephews survived, which was his main goal. So, Von Umtida has been killed. La Saint is lost. And the Allies have just won the Battle of Waterloo. So, I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap-up. Put the sword back. Put the sword back. So, that is the defense of La Saint at the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have enjoyed this, please go out and buy the audio book. I'm not sponsored or anyway, but it's just a fantastic book. Uh, Longest Afternoon. I'll put a thing here. Audio book or printed copy. It's, it's quite a short book. It's, it's very, very good. Anyone who reads about La Haison and doesn't want to wargame it uh, has something wrong with them. Um, this would be a fantastic wargame. It's just finding the right system. I think a little bit of mix of Sharp Practice and uh, Chosen Men, the Osprey book, um, would work quite well. Uh, now I just need to find someone with a 28 mil. La Haison and uh, get get painting. Um, I have a few battalions of French infantry painted up. 
these are these are grenadiers of just a line regiment it's probably horrendously out of focus but um i gotta get painting and then find myself some la haie Son. so if you enjoyed these videos make sure you go out and buy the book again not sponsored i have nothing to do with the book whatsoever it's just fantastic um hit subscribe check back for more content and um yeah and have a have a wonderful day and happy wargaming